right rudder at all really, I was quite surprised. And she was off a bit before I was ready, but anyway, gear up, climbing away, looking good. G'day, I'm Phil from PhilTech, and in this video, we're going to continue on with the series of videos we've made making recently about how PhilTech went from a single cylinder engine to a liquid cooled V12. In the last video, we've been looking, uh, taking a look at the little V6 engine, and we decided that that was as far as we could take this engine concept. We were advised that we really need to go for a lot bigger motor, so we needed to start all over again. We set some specifications of the the sort of things that we really wanted to achieve with this new motor. Firstly, it had to be a lot bigger, um, preferably flying a one-fifth scale aircraft. Um, it had to be easy to start, so we wanted an onboard electric starter. We wanted something easier to tune because the V6 was a really tricky tuning up all the individual carburetors. Um, we wanted to make sure the cooling system would work well. We wanted to be able to drive large scale multi-blade propellers. Um, and also we wanted 12 cylinders this time because we wanted to be as close to the real thing as possible for a, a model Spitfire or a P51 Mustang. And we wanted the engine to actually look look more like a real thing. The, the V6, it looks different to other miniature model engines, but it still doesn't really look like a Rolls-Royce Merlin engine. So after a lot of pondering and thinking about things and doing lots of drawings, we came up with this motor. We went from about 10 cc's up to 108 cc's. Let's have a closer look at this engine. Firstly, you can see we've got the reduction gearbox on this engine. It could go from a 1 to 1 ratio to a 2 to 1 ratio because we weren't quite sure what ratio we needed. But we did have a bit of an issue with the development. We found that the spur gears were frothing up the oil so much that it was in either blowing out the ventilator tube or it was pushing the oil from the gearbox back into the front section of the engine. So to resolve that we went with dry sump lubrication. And you can see a pump here and an oil tank there. A complex way to solve the problem but that I think showed the the way and the philosophy we had to go with to get this engine to a reliable state. It's got six air intakes, but they're not carburetors, they are actually fuel injected. We went with electronic fuel injection, because we thought that would be the simplest way of running a complex mode like this. The fuel injection uh, had one a few issues, a very big electronic box, um, and it was probably beyond the scope of FuelTech to afford to get it to a production state, but it's certainly something to consider in the future. We can see the, we tilt it up, we can see there's an electric starter unit there and in the casing back here is a ring gear and so we've got electric starting on board on electric starting we've gone with the slider throttle system that we were developing on the previous prototype We've still got air cooling though. I wanted to go with liquid cooling, but it, it is just beyond me to work out how to do it at that point. It, uh, 
it seemed to be delivering the sort of power that we wanted, but we still struggled with keeping it cool. Here we have one section of the crankshaft and the six pins on the end and they lock in with the six pin six holes on the next section of the crankshaft and with six pins you can index it to whichever correct position you need for a 12 cylinder engine that took several prototypes um, and some computer analysis to get that to run right and that's been a really uh, successful part of the new engine design. The fuel was delivered via a, a little miniature electric fuel pump that we had to develop and through a common rail here so that we would get consistent fuel pressure because unlike normal model engines which are fairly short this one's a long long distance from the fuel tank way back here to the front carburetor and as you go up up maybe trying to do a loop the front carburetor will go out of tune with respect to the rear carburetor so the solution was pressurized fuel now let's have a listen to what it sounds like We'd learnt a lot with the air-cooled 108cc V12. The main issue was the cooling and what to do about the, the fueling system. And we're going to look at that in the next video. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please remember to subscribe and like. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, please put them in the comments page. Till next time, thanks for watching.